Hello and welcome to the last week of our course. This is week 12 and in this week uh, our goal, our goal for this week, goal for this week, uh, the main topic for this week is the so-called the Axela Ascoli theorem and uh, I've mentioned this in the last week's lectures the Arcelascoli theorem and this is about compactness compactness of subsets uh, let's call this f of the space of continuous functions from x to y so um, compactness under which topology and this uh, this we will specify and this is the uh, topic of this particular lecture and this is the topology of compact convergence under the topology of compact convergence uh, so we have um, so this topology on is defined on uh, the space of continuous functions from x to y and we have already seen two different um, topologies um, when x is the topological space and y is a metric space we have seen the um, topology of pointwise convergence on cxy as well as the uh, uniform topology on cxy which is generated by the uniform metric and this third topology is the topology of comp compact convergence again when y is a metric space and um, we will define it uh, shortly and it sits uh, between the topology of compact uh, the topology of pointwise convergence and the topology the uniform topology uh, meaning that so the uniform topology is in general finer than the topology of pointwise convergence but uh, the topology of compact convergence is coarser than the uniform topology but finer than the pointwise convergence topology so we will see all that uh, in this lecture so uh, let's recall uh, recall that the uniform metric uniform metric rho bar on uh, cxy so uh, i'm assuming throughout uh, we will assume assume throughout that yd is a uh, complete metric space so this will make uh, some of our um, some of our arguments easier and uh, so when it is an arbitrary metric space we have defined the uniform metric this rho bar metric which was given by the supremum of the d bar metric of f x g x so the distance between f x and g x with respect to the um, d bar metric coming from the d metric on y and the supremum is taken over all x in x so uh, re recall that the d bar metric uh, for two points y1 y2 in y uh, is just the minimum of d y1 y2 and 1 so um, so why do we take the question is why do we take uh, d bar here rather than simply taking d and so, so let me write this so question why take d bar instead of d and um, this is easily seen when say x equal to y equals r and uh, you can consider two functions let's say one of the functions is y equal to x and the other function is y equals x squared so so this is y equal to x squared and this is let's say this is g of x and this is um, f of x 
Okay, so we take two functions from R to R. So F and G are two functions from R to R. And if we if we consider simply the supremum, the supremum of um, F and uh, the distance between the Euclidean distance between Fx and Gx says that x belongs to r this is going to be plus infinity because this distance um, is going to blow up and it is um, it is not bounded it, it goes to infinity so this this kind of thing we want to avoid because we are going we want to um, define a metric and uh, a metric always uh, should take a finite value so um, to avoid this so to avoid uh to avoid the scenario so this is the answer to this question and uh, to avoid the scenario where the supremum takes infinity uh, plus infinity value so uh, on the other hand if we restrict uh, let us say if if um, f and g are bounded functions so what do i mean by bounded function so this is this means that f of x and g of x the image in inside the uh, space y the matrix space y are bounded so then we say that the functions are bounded so if they are bounded functions and um, these uh, images are bounded then you can replace d bar with d and you will get a finite value so we can define we can define rho of f of g for bounded functions and this you can simply define as the supremum of d of fx gx and the supremum is taken over all of x so uh, in this case this is this gives a is a finite value is always a finite value because the supremum is going to be finite because the distance between fx and gx the um, now the distance between two sets is going to be finite so um, when, when are functions bounded well for example if you have x compact then the um, the image of f uh, image of x under f ever under a continuous function is compact and and then uh, the image will be bounded so uh, there are various scenarios where you want to consider bounded functions bounded continuous functions instead of um, just um, continuous functions so uh, once we have this um, this uh, row of f of g then for bounded functions for bounded and there is a simple relation between a row and a row bar so for bounded functions for bounded functions uh, a row and a row bar are related as follows so row bar of f and g is equal to the minimum of rho of f and g comma one so this is precisely the relation between d and d bar and this is why we denote um, the uniform metric as rho bar in in the general case when we have continuous functions so um and now uh, let me give a remark here uh, there is yet another way another way to ensure finite values when taking the supremum supremum is to restrict uh, restrict the supremum restrict the supremum To compact sets so compact subsets of uh, y uh, of x 
So rather than taking the supremum over all um, points in X, we restrict to compact subsets of X. And um, in, in this way, we get a new topology, which is then called the topology of compact convergence. And so let me give the definition here. So let us look at the definition of the topology of compact convergence. And we will define it using uh, uh, by defining a basis for this topology. So for this, let X be a topological space yd be a metric space and for each f um, a function between uh, any function between x and y not necessarily continuous and epsilon greater than zero is given and it's also given that c is a compact set in y so with these three things so this uh, function f this epsilon um, positive number epsilon and uh, this compact set c we define uh, a subset b c f epsilon of this set of functions from x to y and this is defined as follows so b c f f epsilon is the set of all functions from x to y for which the supremum over um, x in this compact set c uh, and this supremum is taken for the distance between fx and gx is less than epsilon so uh, this is um, the set of a uh, set of all functions which are close to f on this subset c so then this collection uh, b of all these b c f epsilon where you vary f over all functions c over all compact sets in y and epsilon greater than zero over all positive numbers then this is a basis on f and x y and this basis generates a topology which is the topology of compact convergence so now we can uh, start to compare the various topologies that we have on uh, cxy and uh, so for this let us uh, have some notation so let tau u be the topology of um, well the uniform topology the uniform topology on cxy we have tau um, pc which is the topology of pointwise convergence convergence on cxy so here again we have um, x a topological space and y d is a metric space so with this metric, we can define the uniform metric on um, on f and x y and c x y uh, gets that metric. And we also have uh, the topology of compact convergence, which I denote as tau c c. So this is the topology of compact convergence that we have just defined. So now let's look at a theorem which uh, compares these three topologies on cxy so of course this last one is also on cxy and uh, we uh, have the following theorem which compares these three topologies so this is the theorem uh, for the comparison of these three topologies we have in general so in general this holds that the topology of pointwise convergence is coarser than the topology of compact convergence which is again coarser than the topology than the uniform topology and uh, um, however in in some special cases uh, we have we can say something more which is that if x is compact then the then the last two coincide so the topology of compact convergence is the same as the uniform topology and if x is discrete it's a, if x is given the discrete topology then the topology of pointwise convergence and the topology of compact convergence so the first two they coincide and there are uh, examples where, uh, for example, the topology of pointwise convergence is strictly coarser than the topology of compact convergence. And similarly, the topology of compact convergence is strictly coarser than the topology of uniform convergence. But in general, we have uh, these relations. And so uh, let us try to show these, um, show these inclusions uh, for, the top for the, these three topologies. And in order to prove this, we need a, a short lemma, uh, which gives a 
basis characterization for the topology of pointwise convergence in terms of the metric.